uh, so I've been sharing some samples of my work using this new library called Network Bending, um, and it seemed like lots of people were interested and wanted to try, give it a try. So this is going to be a demo. Probably break this up into a couple parts because it can get pretty uh, sort of stacks on, on, on top of each other to sort of work through this. Um, so the, in this session, I'm just going to look at how to produce static images using this library, um, and then we'll dig into maybe doing some training on uh, feature representation and then video as well. Uh, so first off, let's take a look at the paper. Um, this came out, I think, uh, earlier this year, like February, around there maybe. Um, Terrence Broad, Broad, I don't actually know how to pronounce the last name, um, is one of the guys leading this project. Uh, some really interesting work. He's from Goldsmiths, um, which is like a creative uh, art, creative machine coding sort of school um, in, the, in I was the Netherlands, United Kingdom. Um, so there's some really interesting stuff here. So uh, ba the basic idea behind network bending is um, StyleGAN um, has like these different layers, right? So inside of each of these um, different layers of the model, um, you can manipulate either the the layer data itself or the, or the image representations at those layers. Um, so what they're essentially doing is they're taking different layers and they're manipulating uh, different properties of these of each of these layers. Um, so really early layers, it can have a big effect earlier on, like at, at the overall image. Um, at later layers, it can have sort of, um, you know, it can touch some of the finer details of things. So here's an example of sort of the layers, right? So uh, in 16 layers, um, you've got two 8 by 8 layers, you know, two 16 by 16s, two 32 by 32s, um, this sort of thing. So uh, just some really, you know, this is basically the structure of it, and we'll look at what this means in a minute. Um, I just want to show you some examples here. So there's some very fun, glitchy sort of things. Um, this right here is an example of where they did a, some training on uh, what they call clusters, which are individual uh, collection of neurons inside of each layer. Um, and they sort of find, this is like feature extraction, right? So they find the layer that um, when you manipulate it using ablation, um, you can either make eyes disappear or you know, using scale, you can make the eyes bigger um, or the nose or other things. So this is like, uh, you know, again, this is kind of taking some of the stuff we've seen in other places, um, like feature extraction, and then also applying these sort of uh, filtering mechanisms to things. Um, there are some, so let's see if we have anything here. Uh, okay, so um, basically the way that this works is that there's a bunch of different uh, filters you can apply to different layers um, or clusters, uh, and when you do that, you get different images out. So at the very top here, you've got just some really fun, sort of like weird looking faces. Um, you know, this being the uh, Raya style again, and then here is what they call a translation. So you move it, shift it to the left, and you get a lot of hair behind the scenes. Um, this is probably scaling. I would just imagine it's scaling up the, the one of the convolution layers. This looks like a rotation. Um, I'm not sure what this is, maybe a stretch or something. Um, but anyway, there's a bunch of different op options here. Um, it, if we take a look at the actual uh, repo here, um, it's pretty straightforward. They, they explain sort of the process to get it working. Um, we'll look at a notebook that I built just to do it. Um, I want to point you to one other thing, which is down here at the bottom in the additional resources. Um, I think it's really important to look at this. So this link here, which is uh, examples of layer-wide transformations being applied to every layer. So if you click on this, um, this opens up a Google Drive folder, which is very, very large. Um, and if we start with unmodified, let's just look at unmodified zero. you will see this face. So this is no modification, um, just the face. So it's kind of good to like keep this in your back of your mind as we look at some of these other transformations. Um, so let's take a look at translate. This is, I assume this is translate uh, up uh, half of the distance of the image. This is translate left. Let's open it translate left. And there's different layers. So each of these layers has their own properties. So let's open layer one. So see, this is moved, and like it's kind of interesting as we have like a like sort of neural netty background, and like you'll see his face kind of got squished. So in doing these translations, it's not just like you're taking the image and sliding it over. It's like because you're moving some of the convolutions and some of the like you're doing some things that are like messing with the way the model thinks. That it's like you get some other weird representations out of this thing as well. Um, so this is layer one. If we look at it, I bet you if we look at like layer fifteen, we'll see something really slightly different. Yeah, so here it's like half his face is moving, and you get this sort of uh, good, like, uh, double exposure sort of look. So there's some interesting things you can do with this. Um, so if we recommend checking out this link, 
Um, what we're going to look at, I think, in this video mostly is we're going to look at rotation. Oops, I want to go back to layer one. So we look at this with rotation. So that's interesting. His face is still there, but like now his, the rest of his head is shifted around it. Um, and we'll also look at, we'll probably look at, um, let's do some scalar multiplying. So we're going to look at scale 5. Um, the reason I want to look at these is because these tend to work without needing cluster clustering, which is something we'll probably cover in another video. It requires like a training and a bunch of other stuff, so um, just keep this video somewhat short. Um, we'll look at how to do this. Oops, that's the wrong not zero. Cool, so look at scaling. I don't even know what that's doing. It's like, I have no idea what that does, what that's doing in that. Oh, it's scalar multiply. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what's going on there. Let's look at um, a higher up layer. Um, let's look at this. Hmm, that is doing weird things to his skin. Um, oh, okay, so this is scalar multiply, which I assume maybe scales up individual neurons maybe, but there's also a scale. So let's look at scale, layer one. Ah, so that does some weird stuff to his face, squishes it out. And if I come up to a higher layer, yep, we'll see that there's like this double exposure thing. So this is something that you'll find as you play with these more that like you'll see each layer has sort of like a slightly different way of operating. Um, so I tend to work with a lot of layer one through five because those are really early layers and they tend to have a more like global effect on overall, uh, overall in the like overall image structure. Whereas like individual middle layers tend to do some, I found some funky stuff that it does. Um, so this is scale two. If we look at scale, 0 0.5. Yeah, so I find that you tend to get a lot more background with, with some of these in these middle layers. Um, and obviously that guy's face looks squished in kind of a funny way. Um, and then your later layers, which I think I showed, um, or actually let's look at layer seven here. So these middle layers, I, I personally, I, I can't really find a way to work well within these middle layers. You tend to just get like this structure where you get a lot of this like noisy, almost carpet background. Um, and that, so I tend to work in either like the beginning layers to get like really global structure or the end layers, which will give you like some of that like double exposure look. Um, so we come here. Yeah, so here's a like this interesting double exposure kind of deal. Um, cool, so I would just, dig around in here. There's like a bunch of different options and so sort of give you a good feel for how each of them works. Um, some of these take in a parameter. So you'll see rotate takes in like a degree. Um, some of these don't, right? So invert uh, isn't going to take in a parameter. It's just going to like do the thing it does. Um, so in the case of invert, it's like truer, it's like on or off. So this is what happens when you invert one of those layers. You get some very funky textures. Um, whereas if you do I would imagine like 15 is going to give you another one of those double exposure kind of things. Yeah, so that gives you a very weird looking image. Um, cool, so just play around with this, look at more of these options. Uh, let's dig into the notebook here. So um, I built a notebook here. This is links to the paper. There's a good video that Terrence made about this and that GitHub repo I just showed you. Um, I should give a shout out to Sid Black who um, helped give me some of the code to get all this up and running. So thank you to him. Um, let's get started. All right, so now we're up and running. Um, we're gonna install the libraries. This does take a little bit of time. Um, so just FYI, just be aware of that. I think it requires like a very specific version of PyTorch. So uh, you have to like uninstall it from Colab and then install the next version. Um, so while that runs, I'll just walk us through what we're gonna do. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna download um, a uh, our model file. So this is running in the PyTorch version of StyleGAN, which means you need to convert your video or your model from a pickle file to a .pt file. Um, there is a video on my YouTube channel that already does that, so you can go ahead and check that out. I've already created a PT file of one of my models, so you can come here and, and download it from this. You can use that for now if you want to. Um, next, we're going to generate some image samples. So we're just going to um, edit a file in here that is called the um, 
example transform config, and I'll look, we'll look at that and walk through how to edit that and what that should look like. Um, and then we're going to run this. This is going to generate some samples. So if you're used to generating samples using um, the TensorFlow version, it's pretty similar. It's just like, how many images do you want? Um, you know, what's the model file? What's your uh, truncation value? And then what am I doing to these images? So we'll set this to 10 just so it generates quickly. And then uh, we'll download those images and take a look at them. Um, next thing we'll look at is we'll actually look at how to generate sample strips. So uh, there's a nice little feature inside of this library that allows you to um, sort of apply one transformation at every layer and see what that transformation looks like. So, you know, it's sort of similar to this where it's like uh, you could look at every one of these layers, but the nice thing is, is that it creates one image for each of these layers, uh, for each uh, transformation. So you'll get a nice long strip so you can look at and sort of like test to see like, oh, what does this do across some images? It's really helpful to understand. Um, and then once you've done that, maybe we'll come back and generate some more images, but this is already a pretty long video, so maybe I'll keep it just at that. Uh, this is still building. Um, so maybe while I'm at it, let's go look at what the, um, what the conversion script looks like. I believe I have to switch to my other account. Yep. So um, I will link to this uh, in the video description. But basically you just pass in, you install this, and then you just upload a pickle and then you run a conversion script that will generate uh, a file, and then you'll just download that PT or move it into Google Drive. How are we doing here? Looks like this finished. Great. So we'll download a, a PT file for us. Um, lots of people tend to use the PyTorch version because it seems a little bit sh more straightforward. Um, if you've ever looked at the code for TensorFlow, it is pretty annoyingly weird, and it, especially the StyleGAN version is very weird. Um, the PyTorch uh, version is much cleaner to work with, so lots of people tend to do that. Um, also, PyTorch just tends to be a more gen more more people use it, so it's easier to understand what's going on there. Um, but anyway, that's the sort of it. So we're all set up here. Um, we're going to need to edit our config file. So uh, this happens to use a, LAN a YAML config, which we probably haven't done before in any of my videos, um, but it's a pretty common technique for machine learning. Basically, inside of your configs folder here, um, we're just going to edit the example transform config. Um, so this used to not work in Colab, but now it does. You can just double click on this file and it will open up. Um, and this is, uh, if you're used to JSON or something, it's pretty similar. So the way this works is up here are the transforms that we are uh, going to apply to an image. And then down here at the bottom, they've listed what all of the uh, transforms are and how to use them, uh, or like the, the, the parameter is expected. So in the case of something like flip, you're not going to pass a flip to any of the parameters, you're, or you're not going to pass a parameter into the flip transform. Um, you just pass, you know, an empty, an empty array, um, and that'll be enough. Or here, it's, uh, you know, rotate, you need to pass in um, a value, and this is a degrees value. Uh, you'll apply what layer you want to use. So if you want to apply this to 15 and get one of those double exposures, you would hit 15. Um, let's try to leave it at 1 for now. Um, and then, uh, yes, yeah, so you can use any of these. Um, there is also a thing like feature param, and this is uh, for when we have clusters. So we won't look at that for now. Um, features all is what we're going to use in, in all of these examples. Um, cool. So let's actually edit one of these. Um, I actually just want to use the rotate. So let's grab rotate. Uh, what's nice is that because they're all down here, we can just cut and paste them. So I'm going to, instead of trans, I'm going to do rotate. Um, and I'm going to remove binary threshold and ablate. I personally find that ablate doesn't work particularly well um, if you're doing it across all the features because it just, it just like zeroes out those, those lay, the, the features of that and it doesn't really help. It's good when you have clustering though because um, you'll see there's a feature cluster here which we're not going to work with. So we're going to remove that. Um, binary threshold, so I'm just going to remove that as well. Um, let's look at rotate and scale. So let's do scale. And let's just leave it at the default of 1.2. Um, but let's do this. So let's apply the rotate at layer five, or layer. Let's do layer three, and let's do scale at layer one. Um, let's do layer scale at layer sixteen. That's the highest layer. So it's uh, zero through sixteen. I don't think zero does anything. Um, at least in any of my tests, that I've yet to see zero actually aff uh, affect a layer. Because I think it's that very basic noise layer. So it's like nothing you can really edit there. But anyway. Um, let's leave this as this, so we're just going to hit X. That uh, This auto saves, even though it never looks like it's saving. Um, 
collab is still kind of a work in progress, seems like, so let's just hit X. Um, and now I'm gonna make sure that I've got everything passed in here. So the PT model file is this, that looks great. And my config is pointed at this, that seems right. So let's just run this. Um, so like TensorFlow, um, all of these scripts start with like a little bit of, uh, it loads that CUDA um, special script that you have to run that always takes a little bit of time at the beginning. So we're just gonna wait for that to run. Um, one thing I'm not passing in here is truncation or size. So if you have a 512 or a 256 model, uh, you'll wanna pass that in. One thing to note is that network bending does not work with non-square models. So you will need a square model in order to make this work. Um, I've actually sort of been adopting a, pro a, a practice of like pretty much always using square models. Um, and if you have a non-square shape, you can do like an anamorphic like squishing or shrinking to make it work. Um, yeah, I'll show a video that maybe does that. Actually, I have a StyleGAN class coming up um, in October. I think there's a, a, the whole StyleGAN class we're going to do in October, three weeks. Um, it'll cover uh, mostly training, but we'll go over some new techniques. So it'll cover, maybe not this, but it'll cover um, you know, how I approach doing square models now. Um, it'll cover some of the new augmentation scripts. It'll be a kind of a deep dive if you've just started touching um, the, uh, the need for... Um, Sorry, I'm seeing this error here, and I'm like, what is this error? I've never seen this one yet. Hmm. So I've seen this error on my local computer before, but never here. Um, let's see if it's still the same deal. That is not going to let me edit this here. Hmm. I wonder if this is a new bug that they've introduced inside of. Collab. All right, I'll be back in a second to see if I can fix this. Wow, that sucked. Um, all right, it looks like what ended up happening here is I was using an old version of LibTorch, and if I upgrade to Nightly, it ended up fixing it. So um, I'll make sure the notebook's up to date with this, and fingers crossed uh, you don't run into any issues. Um, sucks that I did, especially during recording this video, but so it goes. Um, okay, so... This ran, it generated 10 images, which is what I asked it to do. But the thing is, I think I didn't set the example to be what we discussed. So let me do that now. So I'm gonna run this again. So I'm gonna click in here. I'm gonna uh, remove all of these. So let's talk about what I was doing. So we were going to do a rotation, which is this one. And we're gonna rotate on layer three, because I know that's kind of a good layer to look at. And then we we're going to do a scale. And we we're going to do scale on the last layer, so layer 16. And let's make this a little bit bigger just so we can have some fun with it. One and a half. Um, cool, let's save that. So now let's run this again. And just so you can see what it's supposed to look like when it runs. And it's telling me rotation should be a float between 0 and 360. So my guess is that uh, when I go to the back to the trans, not that one. When I go to the example transform, I need to make 45 a float. So let's do that. Let's run this again. Cool, and now this is running, and you'll see it's spitting out uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 10. And if I go into my samples here, I should have a sample, so let's just double click on this and see. Cool, and the thing is, I have no idea what this looks like if I don't make, let's just make these a zip. Download this, we have it here. Um, one thing that I definitely need to update in this library is, um, it just always spits out to a gener generic uh, sample folder. I think it'd be nice if I could set that. So I will probably make that update in the next day or two to make sure that we're getting the right thing. Um, so this is now saved out. So let me just refresh over here, let me download the sample file, and then um, let's do this. Come on, is 
I going to download? There we go. All right, so that fills up. Let's do this. Let's open up um, the example transform. And let's just empty this out. So I want to basically what this is going to do is it's going to spit out what the images should look like without the transforms. Because I think it's probably hard to see what these look like without doing that. So let's run this again. Man, this is running slow. Seven and a half megs and it's taking forever to run. Uh, okay, so it's going to be angry because I can't do this. So let's grab one of these and just, um, let's grab the rotation one and let's just set it to 0, .0. It was mad because there was nothing in the rotation array. Okay, so while this is downloaded, let's show in Finder, open up one of these. And over here, let's just, so we're gonna refresh. So we just overrode these images. So let's just download one of these. Nothing is going right for me while I record this video today. Let's open this in preview. Okay, so that's what zero looks like. And then if we come over here, oh my God, seriously. Okay, we're gonna do something else here. We're gonna just unzip this. We're gonna do unzip, and we're gonna do our samples, and we're gonna zip it to uh, slash content. Sure, load that. Uh, doing some really hacky stuff right now. Anyway, um, I just reopened all these and we're going to download this one again. Jesus, nothing is working for me right now. Okay, so we're gonna open this. All right, and so here's what we get. Um, now these are using the exact same vector, I assume, although that's actually a good question. <laughs> uh, this is delightful. Um, anyway, uh, let's do this instead. So I I'm like 90% sure this is working because you can kind of see that this is uh, a one and a half zoom of this other layer behind it. So I'm just gonna assume that this is working, this is rotating a thing and it's spinning out uh, the scale. Um, I don't actually think it's grabbing the same random vector. I think it just produces a random image every time and it doesn't save the, save the vectors anywhere. So, all right, this is a little messy, uh, but it does work. You can play with this, you can figure it out. Um, I'll show in another video how to save out the vectors. It, it uses a different, uh, uses a different branch of this repo to get vectors out. But anyway, we'll do that in a minute. Um, so let's look at actually how to use the sample strip. Uh, so this is pretty similar. Um, there's just a different config file. So there's one called uh, sample strip config. And if you open this, you'll see there's just a binary thresh. So let's actually do this. Let's just grab um, the example from here. Whoa, that is not what I thought that was. Uh, this one. So let's just grab, this is rotation, and obviously that's zero, zero, so we don't really care about that. Come back over here, and we will. So this only takes one transform at a time. Um, and of course, it's gonna split it across all of our um, layers. So we don't need to assign a layer, so we're gonna come here, and we're gonna paste transform in. And then um, the transform of rotate, so let's set a rotation value of um, 45.0. And then this is gonna save out 10 different versions of this. This seems good. So we're gonna save out 10 different vectors, um, each layer of the network, um, each 
each layer rotated 45 degrees so we can sort of see what, what changes over time. Um, let's go ahead and run this. This will take a little bit a little bit longer because it's running this across all 16 layers, so it's going to take a little bit. It's going to do for every strip you get 16 images uh, in a in a strip. And let me just see. Let's see. Generate sample strips. Let me see if this saves out any different names here. Yeah, so it's still it's just gonna overwrite these. So let's actually well, it is what it is now. Um, if you want to change this, you could just edit this line and generate sample strips right here. You just say strip dash. Oh man, sorry. Losing an hour of uh, figuring out how to fix this thing and now I'm tired. Um, could edit this to say strip and then it's gonna save it a, a sample called strip dash and then this number. Um, let's refresh this here and let's download, download one of these. Um, these are going to be pretty big PNG files because they are 16 images stacked on top of each other. So it's like 1024 wide by whatever 16 times 1024 is. Yeah, uh, that's very tall. Um, so. That's why that image is 15 megabytes. And actually, while I'm here, let's do this. Let's save out those strips to a zip file. Let's do zip dash r samples free again, 10 strips. And then we want to point it at this is why I end up with like ten, 20 files all named zero 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 zero. Let's look at this. Okay, so uh, this is very difficult to look at all on one screen like this. But essentially what you're seeing here is this is a rotation of 45 degrees at every layer of the network. So in at layer zero, or this is, mm, I don't know if this is layer zero or layer one. Let's see here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So this is layer 0. So I said layer 0 doesn't do anything. Apparently it does because it looks very different than this one. Um, this is layer 0. This is layer 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So you'll see layers 1 through 4 don't look that different. You'll see there's a little bit of texture in the top corner. Um, there's a little bit of stuff here. Um, you know, pretty minor differences. When you hit layer, what is it, 6, I think? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Like, you can see that there's a, a bit more difference here. So the image, it's, or the, the sort of image itself is, because again, remember that it's a square rotated 45 degrees. So the image itself is pretty clean, but the rest, there's like this like kind of convolution-y, neural net-y looking thing in the corners. Um, that sometimes looks really bright uh, and sometimes, you know, doesn't do much of anything. And then as you hit, I don't know what layer this is, probably like 13 or 14, um, 16, 7, 16, 15, 14, 13. So at layer 13, you're starting to see that ghosting, which is that um, the original layer underneath it, um, or those are, I guess it's not really the original layer, it's all the layers beneath it. So if this is 13, it's, uh, you know, 13 through 0. Uh, being developed underneath it and then this other layer on top and like you know so you get a different view um, at this layer compared to this layer so you could run this for every transform right so the next thing we could do is actually just look at it with scale so why don't we actually do that this video's already run way too long longer than expected 
Um, but so it goes. Let's just do it. This thing's going to tell me there's an error. Um, okay, that's fine. Whatever. Um, so let's do... I never remember the exact naming convention here. So let's do scale. So we'll do scale and we'll do one and a half. So you just pass in scale and you do 1.5. Um, and then again, we'll just exit out. And let's just make one sample. This is ridiculous to be asking it to do all this work. go that one's done refresh download hmm. why is that so oh because <laughs> I did it in the didn't do it in the strips man what a terrible tutorial this has been well I hope you're at least understanding what's going on wonder why the image was generated so quickly. And now I know. All right, let's try this again. There we go. And you'll see, see I changed out the name, so now it's actually working. I should really just commit that to this file. You know what? I'm going to do that right now. Well, this downloads. You can watch me be hacky on GitHub. Pushing to master because I don't give a shit. Um, is this thing done yet? No, it's not yet. Damn. Okay, there we go. So um, this is scale. So look how interesting this is. So scale at zero, um, scaling this thing up is like, it's kind of weird. It doesn't, doesn't uniformly scale up, right? So some of these parts are staying kind of narrow while the rest gets a little bit chunkier. And then it's getting, actually getting bigger as we get higher up in the network. And here again, you sort of see that bifurcation of that like almost double uh, exposure. So, um, okay, this was like, pretty chaotic tutorial, but I hope you understood how to use this. Um, I'll update the notebook to make sure it's got all the latest things so that we're not running into the same issues that I ran into. Um, and should we go? Uh, so in the next video, I'll look at um, maybe how to do some animation with this, how to save some of the latent uh, vectors so you can come back and, you know, alter things. Because obviously I think this was just operating randomly and was not like, it's hard to sort of judge how things change across those. So um, we'll look at that in the next video. I think the video after that, we'll look at actually uh, doing some training. Um, to actually generate these clusters. Uh, Terrence sent me all the instructions to do that, but I haven't done it yet. So I'm going to do that before I record a video. Otherwise, we'll have another chaotic video like this. Um, and at 3.10 a.m., I'm done here. So, uh, you know, let me know if you still have issues. Uh, drop me notes in, in YouTube or join me on Slack and ask questions there. All right. Thank you.